All right, all right. It is Sunday morning, and we've got the we've got the Rascal crew in here. <laughs> got Para endless endless Baggins endless sore. Sorry, endless sore Baggins. I'm just gonna I just like calling you Baggins, not the whole full name. What I, I think you told me one time what endless sore meant, but you got to remind me because I forget. Uh, we got Adrian who barely woke up. It looks like. Um, Got the great Colin, who I guess is moving. Are you moving because you um, bought a house? Or are you just moving renting places? What's going on? Why are you moving? Uh, yeah, where is Michael? It's his freaking set. <laughs> That'd be funny. Yeah, we are the little rascals. So the question is, is who is who? Huh? Uh, who, who, who would be which characters? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, yeah, hopefully Michael shows up because this is his set. Um, you don't want to miss your set, especially if you're a regular. Uh, so we have to address something before we actually get in the set. So I'll give him a couple minutes, maybe a minute to come in. So I noticed like the last week or whatever, the, the endless, endless sore, <laughs> the endless drama with YouTube continues. I just don't know what is going on. It's just weird. So, oh, wait a minute. Oh, you're renting a bigger place? Going to be a dad of two? Wait, you got twins? You have twins coming, Colin? <laughs> Paris, yeah, I can totally agree with that. Paris, Spanky. You're going to have twins? That's uh, pretty awesome, Colin. Congratulations. You're the, uh, you're the little rascal that had two little, little, little rascals. <laughs> um... So in the uh, last like week or so, maybe a week and a half, uh, I was realizing that I wasn't getting like any reminders in my little thing. Like if somebody comments or somebody likes a video or something like that, I usually get like a little notification so I can click on it and I try to like respond to any every comment that I get if I get comments. Um, and when I realized, I was like, wait, it's been a week since I've even seen the notifications. Then I realized, like, I haven't seen a comment in a really, really long time. So, um, I was like, I gotta go look look at this. So, Because I, I went into, if you go to YouTube Studio, and I went into comments, like, there's actually, like, a tab for comments. All of a sudden, I see all these fucking comments from, like, nine months ago. The comments from nine months ago that I never responded to. Why? Because I never saw them. I never, they never popped up on my little thing. So then I check my settings and mysteriously my settings are turned off for notifications. I never did that. So again, like I just don't, I mean, why would YouTube want to do that and like not give me notifications? I don't know. And if, all of a sudden there was like a switch over that that would be the default of no notifications would be unlike YouTube and any other marketing ploy. They want you to get notifications. They want you to get bombarded with like constant free advertisement of whatever product you're engaging in. So notifications would be a way for you to like rem be remembering YouTube again. <laughs> so for it to be mysteriously just like defaulted turned off is something I just don't see happening. So then why would they just default me to not getting notifications to anything? I'm telling you, YouTube is is so weird. Like, so I basically, yesterday after, I don't know, maybe like at midnight or something like that, I was like, huh, there's all these comments. So I tried to go through and at least comment to most of them. So if you're like seeing a comment from me replying to your comment from like nine months ago, that's why. <laughs> I did not like see all these comments and it kind of pisses me off because I, I like comments because you it's you know people are giving you their thoughts and it doesn't give me a chance to like respond to any of them um, so it's kind of annoying so I don't know why I'm gonna start checking 
uh, through the, the back door, so to speak, to find out uh, if people are commenting and I don't know it so that I can kind of keep up, up on what people are trying to say and think because that's probably a good 40 to 50% of my channel is like interacting. Actually, that's like 80% of my channel is wanting to interact with people about content, about all kinds of stuff. So if you take that away, <laughs> it's kind of fucking stupid. So anyway, I, I just think YouTube is seriously getting worse and worse and worse. And they don't, that, that, and that's one thing if you have problems, everybody, every app, every place has problems, but it's when you don't even care <laughs> that you're so big that you're just like, they can suffer. It's like corporations, man. They just don't give a shit once they get too big. Um, so anyway, yes, uh, had to re-click the notification bell on a bunch of channels. Yeah, okay, so there you go. Um, so if Colin had to do it, then maybe it was a default thing. Why they would default to you not getting any notifications is probably the dumbest business model ever. But that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, but there's, a, like, for instance, there's, like, probably 10 comments of people who are not a part of the channel that were asking questions about Opeth or something like that that, I think those people, I want to address those people and address their their comments. I'm like, that's not like I got a huge channel. Like, it'd be one thing if I had like, you know, 30,000 followers and there's just no way you can keep up with all those comments. It's kind of like, that's why I like our live streams because there's enough people in here, but not enough people that it's easy to like interact. Like if you ever watch people who have tons of followers and they're on a live streams, it's just like constant Rolodex. It's just like brrrr. There's no way you can like comment to that stuff and react. So I don't want that. Um, so if I have enough time and I have enough, you know, or, you know, comments that I can see that I can react to and comment back to, I want to do that. That's kind of, like I said, 80% of my channel. So it's kind of annoying. All right, uh, let's get into this. Michael doesn't seem like he's shown up. <laughs> Maybe he's sleeping. <laughs> Uh, maybe he got messed up with the time change, but let's see what he has to say. He says, okay, Cap, I got a new set list. I've been mulling over a bunch of ideas and finally just settled on something I'm going to call a prog metal sandwich. Okay. Between two slices of a classical with some cheese on the bottom. <laughs> okay, that's a nice way to describe it, Michael. Perhaps you'll all figure out what I meant by the end of the set. <laughs> Okay, number one is A Short Ride in a Fast Machine by John Adams. No, not the Revolutionary War John Adams. <laughs> I if, if it was, I didn't know he played music. <laughs> but a modern American composer. Oh, this is classical. I was going to say that, uh, that title did not ring a bell at all. This is an example of an American minimalism in music. Interesting. Now, the best way I could describe minimalism is in art, actually ever see a drawing or a painting that is actually just a few squiggly lines but when you look close you can actually see things like a female face or a dog or a flower etc yes well musically it works the same way basically saying what you want to say using very simple components in this piece of no or in this piece no instrument does all that much although the brass is predominant <clears throat> excuse me just all kinds of simple repetitive parts from, that form a whole which is greater than <coughs> <coughs> excuse me which is greater than the sum of its said parts i realize this will not be to everyone's liking but i'm just hoping you all understand minimalism by the time it's done i'm in uh and i think he meant yeah i'm entranced by it it's a bit of a mishmash that somehow comes together to make a meaningful music musical picture. For the record, the other Adams pieces I've heard were a bit more conventional while still being minimalistic. This one is a bit out there. All right, so A Short Ride in a Fast Machine by John Adams. I'm guessing that none of us have heard this. <laughs> Michael with the mansplaining. <laughs> Perfect. I like it. All right, here we go. Let's try this out. Wow, that's really minimalistic. I hear nothing.
and turn it up. Sounds like Superman. <clears throat> Definitely the Superman theme. <laughs> yeah, Colin, that's exactly what I was thinking. It was like, there seems it seems to be very busy. <laughs> the only thing that's repetitive, well, I guess it is repetitive, but the only minimalist thing I hear is the t -t 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 -t. <laughs> Reminds me of Titanic soundtrack. And they're about to hit the uh, iceberg. Yeah, Michael, I'm gonna say, like, again, I don't know, so I'm a stupid idiot, but this does not sound minimalistic to me. JBB, I can hear, you know, really pay attention to that. Each individual part is not really doing anything. So you're saying, I guess, maybe a better way to describe it is less range. Very small range. Um, the horns are doing a little bit. Those little skips, those note skips are I would agree, Colin. I think we're on the same page. at the end uh, I just got caught off guard by uh, Adrian's little uh, insight to his marriage <laughs> I have a guy that I used to work with in uh, Korea that uh, his wife he does tend to especially when he's drunk he tends to just like over talk about stuff and his wife said the same thing to him I don't know if mansplaining is the best I guess if it's in a general sense that's what they meant, but I think it's more of just like, because like, mansplaining tends to be like a guy, you know, maybe doing specific things to like educate the girl or whatever, but mansplaining can also have a general sense of just like over talking about shit because they think everybody else is stupid and needs to hear it. <laughs> uh, but that's funny. I would love to hear. You should get your wife on here one time so you guys can have a counseling session live. <laughs> 
kind of funny. Uh, as far as the song, yeah, uh, I do. I would say, <clears throat> you know, obviously I wouldn't put that on a uh, on a playlist or something like that. It's not something I would just because even even for classical kind of stuff, it's too busy in the sense of too like too much going on for me to be able to relax to that. Like I tend to like think of classical music as like a relaxing background kind of thing, but that kind of, that's why like even like soundtracks or certain soundtracks that like, I don't like listening to soundtracks because a lot of times certain tracks of the soundtrack will be nice, but like in the middle of it, it just kind of explodes because it's like going with what the movie's doing. So you're gonna have like these really incredible like bursts of energy and and like life that is not very comforting to me so that song had too much going on for me to just like feel relaxed sitting back which is what i tend to listen to this type of music for uh but i do like that you introduced me to a new concept in classical music which i think is what your point was because you said i don't think this is gonna be for everyone which is fine but you did understand or enough to like that you were introducing a concept to us that I think is cool. So a minimalist concept is probably the first time at least that I've, you know, known that consciously of what that is and that that's actually a thing in classical music. So for that, very, very cool. Um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate the education is basically what you just did. You edu educated us, <laughs> but it's not something I would listen to again. <laughs> Um, which by the way, Michael, where the fuck are you? <laughs> it's like, dude, where are you at? I hope, I hope you're okay. Like I, anytime something like this happens, it's kind of like, I hope it's just as simple as something came up. That's nothing. That's not a huge deal other than like, you know, they're in the hospital or something like that. So, okay. Number two, it says a welcome change is the name of the song by Conum. I think is how you say it. Con no, oh, Conum. He said, he actually spelled it out for me. Thank you. I, it looks like ka nam, but it's ko num, konum. Not sure how it's pronounced, but to be honest, I say konum. Okay, he says konum. It to me, it looks Greek, and Greek has an ah like omicron, so it looks like it'd be konum, but we'll see. They are a prog metal band based in the UK, Manchester to be exact. They are described as a new incarnation of the band Ascent with a different keyboard and bass player. Came across them with Googling new prog metal bands. I've never done that, actually. I never just typed into Google new prog metal bands, but he did. Their debut album here was released February 2021. Okay. I like a lot of what they do, although I didn't find the album overwhelmingly great. But you're also very picky, Michael. I do like this song, though the singer... Well, I'll let you guys listen and decide on that. I've got my own opinions that I'll share upon request. While I'm not blown away, they do enough things I like, so I'd check out their next album when it comes out myself. Holy shit, this is a 10-minute song. Uh-oh, we're getting into Manuel Romero territory. Which, by the way, where's Manuel been? We haven't seen him in a couple weeks or a week. Uh, but this is an ode to Manuel because it's 10 minutes and 34 seconds. Shit, this is a banger. Let's get on it. <clears throat> Conum, Conum. Maybe it's Conum. It looks like Conum now. You can see the name in the backdrop, Adrian. <clears throat> I like the way this is starting. Sounds like I'm listening to my peaceful meditation playlist on Spotify. <laughs> Which, I'd love to go to sleep to this kind of music. <laughs> there we go, Baggin said, this sounds like minimalistic. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of what I was expecting in the last song. Very happy. 
John Petrucci song. Like off his album, like his solo album. I like that bass. Digging the music. Definitely digging the instruments. Got like a happy vibe to it too.
Well, he just said JBB like, well, the vocals, uh, I'll let you decide. <laughs> I think what he's trying to say is like, it's not bad, but he can understand that most people maybe not like it. Yeah, definitely like this break. And even his voice here sounds a bit better. So unforgiving. Yeah. I, I don't like it when he does the... Hopefully he doesn't do that when he orgasms. <laughs> Sounds very Haken right here. Dream Theater-ish, but more Haken. Oh, nice build here. Let's hear a guitar solo. Let's get into a guitar solo, yo. Basically loves to go up the neck a lot. Here we go. Oh, it's keyboard. I think it's a good choice. I like his choice of patch, the keyboard. His choice of patch is good. Yeah, he went back to the... Sounds like we're coming to the end. So let's get like da 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 all right, so, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious, Michael, that most of the people in the chat really like the instrumentation of the band and glad you introduced us to a new band. It's funny that you found these guys by just typing in new prog metal band or whatever on Google. That's pretty cool because uh, it's just crazy that there are so many bands out there that, you know, most people don't know about that are doing this kind of work. It's kind of cool. So I have a question for you guys because this song made me think about this. Um, so imagine you're this band, okay? Imagine you're like in this band or imagine you're the singer and you're just on YouTube and since you're relatively new, you're not like a, you know, Haken or whatever where you're so big that there's too many fans that are commenting about your music. You're new, so you're up and coming. And all of a sudden this video pops up on YouTube that has your band's name in it and a song that someone's reacting to. And you listen to what we just said. <laughs> and you're listening to that and you're the singer of that band, okay? Let's say you're the singer of that band and you're hearing basically everybody say, this, this song would be much better without that freaking music singer. <laughs> Number one, how would you feel about that? Obviously, it would not be nice and pleasant. Now, on the flip side, imagine you're one of the other band members, like the bass player or something like that, and you see it first, and you, like, are thinking in your mind, holy fuck, we might have to change singers. 
I mean, what do you do at that point? You know what I mean? Like, it was pretty across the board that all of us were like, yeah, including Michael in his description. That's, a, I'm not saying majority should always rule, but it definitely says something that like, you're only gonna go, especially with bands, you're really, it's gonna be hard to break through if your front man is not like what people enjoy. So, I mean, yeah, I just, I wonder like what the band would do at that point if they'd be listening to this and like they're listening to me actually say this and they're like, e maybe we should have a conversation. <laughs> So anyway, I just, uh, it's not even constructive criticism because it's tone. I guess I, I guess there were people saying that like his phrasing was a little bit weird, but I bet, I think most of it is his tone. It's kind of like he reminded me of that um, Pain of Salvation singer a little bit. And then it reminded me, I also remember there's a song that was like, dun 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 that song from the 90s, I think, that played every time I was in Subway. It was one of those songs that played when I was in Subway that I always remember. Cheryl Crow was the other one. I was trying to think of this yesterday and I couldn't think of it until just now. Cheryl Crow's um, famous song. Those two songs. What is that name of that song? I can't think of the name of the song. Shine or something like that? I can't remember. That song and Cheryl Crow's song used to play in Subway all the time, but I digress. So that guy's voice and that that guy's voice sounded a little bit like this too. So I don't I think it's more about his tone that is not a pleasing. And it's interesting because you could even say this about James Labrie and like Dream Theater never would have been great, but at the time that James came in, he was great. Especially in the prog metal scene, he was considered great. So it, it, it actually propelled them because it went from Charlie Dominici to him, which was a step up by, you know, to a lot of people in the prog scene and kind of catapulted them into where they were. But now it's kind of like people don't like him as much. But I think your band can only typically go as far as your front man's good. And what would you do with that? Yeah, that's what it was. Collective soul. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> um, and so... I just, what do you do? They're at the beginning of their career, basically. Do they make a change or do they just be like, we're gonna ride or die with this dude? That's that's just a question that people have to answer for, well, the band has to answer for themselves. If they ever hear this, we're not shitting on you, singer. We're just saying, at least in this context, a lot of us didn't like your vocals as much. Um, maybe it was just the song. So keep that in mind. Um, he says, the next two songs are by a band called Distorted Harmony, which we've heard, off their Chain Reaction album. Now a word about my musical taste in prog rock. The previous song and the next two contain most of the elements that make me like a band, song, or album. These elements include good, strong guitar parts and being the backbone of the songs, good melodies and or riffs, a willingness to play around with meters, a willingness to throw in surprises so I can't expect what will come next. Intricate parts and changing the dynamics. I can't stand when one song after the other sounds the same. Yes, is just loud metal. I like loud parts mixed with quiet parts, etc. And finally, I like having developmental sections that are instrumental so the song is more than just verse, chorus, verse, chorus, guitar, solo, chorus, and out. Yes, I can understand that. I don't mind verse chorus verse chorus guitar solo and out I, I like that um distorted harmony is from tel aviv israel sweet i didn't know that um i did I, we have had these guys on the channel before i'm pretty sure they've got three albums out i heard the new album pop up on my amazon music songs you may like list <laughs> intrigued me but didn't love it then I read somewhere that Chain Reaction was their best album, and when I checked it out, I liked it a lot. Had a hard time picking which songs, but finally settled on the following two. So here we go. This song is called 
Methylene Blue by Distorted Harmony off the Chain Reaction album. Methylene Blue. Methylene Blue. Here we go. Hopefully this one's not 20 minutes. I don't know how long it is. What is up, Scotty? Scotty Scotty's in the house. Ranch. I'm liking this dig and but I do feel like this is turning into a 20 minute song or something. 10 to 20 minute song the way it's starting. Nice piano. build like that and then go back to the beginning. <laughs> it's kind of, I was expecting to keep going. change much this goes against everything michael says that he like kind of looks for in a band because <laughs> this is not venturing out anywhere yet so again maybe it's a 20 minute song okay Side. 
side feel to me. Not as dark, but... Just enter the jungle, people. Welcome to the jungle. There, there's an interesting switch that I think Michael likes. The willingness to switch and not do chorus, verse, chorus, verse. Oh. Yep, definitely like this part. Yeah, I think Scott summed it up correctly. It's a rarity that we all agree on stuff. It seems like today is like the day of agreeance. that not being able to guess what's going to happen. I am sorry for killing you. Sorry for killing you. Can't take it back though, can you? Methylene blue. Methylene blue. I am sorry for killing you. Isn't methylene blue like the... Stuff of Breaking Bad. <laughs> Don't forget what we did to you. Yes, this is the third song. JBB must be a chemist. It's an indicator chemical, or whatever that means. Indicator? Indicator of what? That you're high on crack? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so that song was weird. Definitely. I can see how it fits Michael's template of what he likes. Because it was like enough unique and not following kind of like the system which is what i think adrian's talking about when he felt like it didn't fit which when you do that when you i've said this before when you decide not to follow the system you're taking a bigger risk it's like high risk high reward kind of thing but if you miss you're gonna miss big which i guess i would rather that than kind of not experimenting at all and just being too same but <clears throat> I, that, I like the beginning, the feeling of the beginning felt good, but it was a little bit too long of an intro before it kind of got into it. And then the middle part was pretty sick, but it definitely didn't fit with the beginning part. But if you're into that, then that's okay. But I don't know if I'm into that. Again, I tend to like more of the A, B, A, B, A, B, A, A kind of situation. I, cause I think it's good song structure just like a movies kind of go in a certain order uh although you can have movies that don't go in a certain order like memento or stuff like that that are good but again high risk high reward if you're going to do something that's outside of the boundaries you're either going to win big or you're going to fail big and i would say the win bigs are quite a lot uh unlikely than the ones that fail and flop so uh yeah i would agree not bad but wasn't something I'd be like, oh, I can't wait to listen to that song again. That's my first thought. Um, so as he said, there's two distorted harmony songs that we're listening to. So the next one is As One, 
It says no need to filter this as it's a fan made video, thank goodness, like the one before just has all the elements for me. Okay, that's what he says. So this is As One by Distorted Harmony. Let's get into it. Kind of starting out like the last song. It's not that loud. Let me turn that up. Ooh. Okay, it's like this song heard us and did decided not to go too long for the build up. <laughs> so it kind of got we kind of got what we asked for. Ooh, wow. Very poppy bass. Yeah, Scott, he mentioned that these were off the same album. Supporting pedophilia indirectly, people. <laughs> I never noticed, Scott. Thanks. You like to look at the weird stuff. <laughs> Don't get turned on, Scott. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, I agree, Colin. The drummer's good, but they're putting him too far back in the mix. Up more in the mix. Adrian, I think that's what Michael likes about them. His hand is dirty, like. Like his hand is dirty. And that, yeah, I definitely think it's a female hand, but it also looks like it could be a child hand. <laughs> but female hands tend to be smaller, but still. <clears throat> like his hands are dirty, like as if it's like a dirty situation. Part sick. This part is sick. And this kind of goes back to Adrian. Oh, look who decided to show. Adrian, this totally goes to what you said. Like, it's got some really good parts, but then it goes off into something that's weird. Thank goodness Michael's not in the hospital. He literally fucked up the time. We're almost done, Michael. Like this part. Don't you 
Don't you have a phone, Michael? Your phone automatically changes time at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, yes. Love this part. And yeah, the drummer is definitely awesome. Well, Michael, there's a good reason why you should start using your phone alarm. <laughs> yeah, we do need to ditch daylight savings time. Korea doesn't do it, and I love it. That's it. Yeah, Korea never did daylight savings, so I had like 10 years of not fucking having to think about it. It was nice. Stupid. Uh, yeah, so I would say the second half of that song was definitely good. I'd even say it started out pretty good. So maybe most of that song is good, but I still think, like Adrian said, it has some weird disconnected parts that just are like, huh? Which is probably why Michael likes it. Because Michael said... Uh, you know, he likes bands that don't, that kind of keep you on your toes, that are not, you know, uh, not kind of predictable in what they're doing, their willingness to do certain things. So I noticed the word willingness was a huge part of like Michael's vocab about what he likes in bands, the willingness to be open to. So I think Michael is psychologically indirectly telling us he's into open relationships and into like, you know, being open. That's a nice little stretch there, huh, Michael? <laughs> um, yeah, I would say, like, uh, Michael, if you listen to what we had to say in the last song, maybe, it would, like, their stuff is a little too disconnected. It's nice that they're willing to, like, be open and, like, not be predictable. Um, but I still think it's... It's something about it is not connecting. Maybe the, the choices that they're making in the disconnection are not necessarily what people like. So, uh, yeah, I definitely like that song better. I felt like they got into it a lot quicker, which was different from the first song. I think took a little too long to build. But that last part of it, and yes, definitely the drummer. The drummer is sick, but that also the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The the mix of that song, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the YouTube or if that's actually how it is on the album, didn't sound that great. It sounded pretty muddy. I'd give it like a muddy. Uh, all right, so let's get on to the last song. This is Claire de Lune. I think it's Lune. Lune uh, by Claude Debussy. De Debussy? Claude Debussy. Oh, actually, thank you, Michael, for spelling these out. This is like the second time you've saved me. Performed by Lola Astanova. Oh, this is like the hot piano chick, right? The classical chick. The video may be a bit cheesy, but I didn't, don't give a shit since it's Lola is hot. <laughs> hey, see? I'm, I was on to something about your openness. <laughs> Maybe you've had some fantasies about the piano and her and, you know. It's actually a very beautiful song that my dad used to play a lot. She does a great job of interpretation on this one. It's not a hard piece to play, but relies on musicianship and interpretation to bring out the emotion. The video actually fits the piece in several ways, so there is a purpose to her costume. Okay, what kind of costume? She's wearing a fucking costume? I'm a bit confused and hope that Jean-Francois can sort this out for me. All right, listen up, Jean-Francois. The literal translation of Claire de Lune is Moonlight. But when I read up on the history of the piece, apparently Debussy had at different points talked about the piece as a stroll in the moonlight. And I quote from this from another source about this song. Claire de Lune takes its title from an atmospheric poem by the French poet Paul Verlaine, which depicts the soul as somewhere full of music in a minor key, where birds are inspired to sing by the sad and beautiful light of the moon. So, Lola's outfit would fit that. What confuses me is why she subtitled this The Muse. A muse is like a fairy, think Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. This would also fit her costume though, although I find no actual mention of a muse in anything about the piece. 
Anyways, it's a gorgeous piece played gorgeously by my favorite pianist. Some of you may even be familiar with the song. All right, he says, all right, Cap, that's 35 minutes of music. I um, uh, hope everyone enjoys. I thank guys for encouragement to mix in stuff other than metal music. I'm pleasantly surprised that many of you have enjoyed the classical music I've posted, and I'll likely mix up a lot of styles in coming sets. So I'm just going to say, I also love that you're mixing it up with the music too, and especially with uh, what Lola, if she's her costume is anything like the past, I'm going to have an instant boner. So let's see what happens. Uh, yeah. Already instant boner. <laughs> what the fuck? She's like a hot angel. Oh. Uh, nice tit shot. <laughs> I wonder if they meant to do that. Wow. The white is beautiful.
this is really annoying and it's ruining the song. Colin, I would agree, but I kind of give her credit for just being like that. To me, it's like Kobe Bryant when someone's like, are you like the best player? And he's like, no, I'm not really good at all. Just be honest. Yeah, I'm fucking awesome. She's just like, yeah, I'm fucking hot and I know you guys know it, so I'm going to use that to my advantage. <laughs> all right, so... Unfortunately, the fucking whatever happened, whether it was corrupted or what when I downloaded it, I think ruined a bit of the music. I don't think that that ruins the whole thing, of course. Um, yes, I can understand uh, Jean-Francois and Colin's thoughts, because it's, it's true. But on the other hand, I also think it's like, we're in a world where, you know, women have advantage in this area of life over men and they're using it to their advantage and I, I i whether i think they should or not is not even the point it's that um at least she's being open and honest about it what i would hate is actually this happened with jennifer love hewitt i think i told you guys i read like i think she's hot was hot is hot and i read some article where she was like yeah um you know, um, I, I realized my whole life that my body and everything was so um, looked at and used and da-da-da. And she, she was like basically bitching about it. And it's like, okay, but you willfully signed up for movies and you signed up for a fucking show that's about massage with happy endings. You got to take some responsibility for it. You can't take all the cake and credit of the sexuality that was used and then like shit on it later. You can't do that. So that's what I'm saying. For me, Lola is like, if I saw an interview with her and she tried to act like all innocent and like she wasn't using her sexuality, it'd be lame. But if she was like, yeah, I'm sexy and people know it and I like it and it adds to the art and because there is an artful part of beautiful women um, and that's okay. That's what they're supposed to be in my opinion. So that's cool just use it you know use it and be honest about it what i don't like is when people use it and then they try to act like oh really i have like a master's in education and i really am going to be a biologist and uh no you're fucking hot and just say you're hot and you're using your hotness for it so <laughs> um yeah no i don't think jbb she can be bothered by it she used it and she used it for a long time to get what she wanted and she's got to take responsibility for that. It's like, if you had a problem with it, you could not do what you did. So, um, but she's still engaging in those kinds of shows. That's what's funny about it. It's like, she's still in a show currently that fucking does nothing but focus on her body. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, can't do that. In my opinion, we'll have to agree to disagree on that one because I don't think you can use something and then bitch about it and complain about it. Um, all right, so we are um, at the end of our time with Michael. Michael, um, sorry you couldn't join us until the last like two songs or one and a half songs, but you have to go back and watch it. And uh, we are here tomorrow night for Dan's Return of the Prodigal Son. Um, you guys have a great Sunday. And I'm trying to think, out of this set list, uh, my favorite besides the last song's visuals <laughs> um has one by distorted harmony hmm i would say i liked the welcome change by conum conum however you say their name uh musically i thought their the, the instrumentation of it was fantastic not really digging the singer as much um so yeah i would put that one as my favorite um, yeah, I'm going to go back and check the video to see if it was downloaded. It obviously had to be downloaded bad on my side, so that kind of sucks But uh, for the last song. Because it did kind of ruin it. Like, one little is okay, but like 20 of them and 30 of them 
is just retarded. So, all right, peoples. It's a Sunday. It's a new lost hour. It kind of sucks. So you guys have a great Sunday, and we will see you hopefully tomorrow night for Dan's set. Peace out.